Hello everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave, it's Gem here. I am really excited about today's video to the point where I've actually been looking forward to filming this all week. Such a nice feeling. Just before we get started I wanted to let you know that this will unfortunately be the last of our extra lockdown videos. It's just a case of now things are beginning to return to normal very very slightly and I'm not going to have the services of Mama Gem for much longer. She's been picking up the slack to allow me to continue to film and filming three videos a week does take up quite a lot of time. So I hope you've enjoyed these videos while I've been able to do them. I've had really good fun doing them and it's nice to know that it's maybe helping some people while away the hours if you are stuck in the house. So as of the 1st of June, which is Monday, we will be back to our normal Thursday and Sunday schedule. So with that out of the way, let's get to top down view and we can get going. So I have some quite exciting goodies to play with today for our third and final uh, video in this particular stash series. So if you remember in the gift set type box thing that I got from Windsor & Newton, there was this pad of acrylic paper which just feels like canvas and this is great so I'm going to be utilising that again today but I have this set of WH Smith acrylic tubes and I was really curious to try these out versus the Winsor & Newton ones because these were super cheap. I paid less than £4 for these uh, which is not a lot of money at all. It's maybe like $6 US give or take. Please don't shout at me for getting the exchange rate wrong. Uh, yeah so I thought we could try a little bit of that and just see how they perform to see whether it really is worthwhile spending a little bit more. Now somebody left a comment under one of the other videos, I think it was Miles, I'm really sorry if it wasn't you Miles, um, saying that about buying professional grade products. The Windsor & Newton acrylic that I've got here is the student grade ones. They do do a professional range the same way as they do with their watercolours, so, but these are like the middle of the road variety. So it will be interesting to see whether there is much of a difference between a budget set and these ones that we already have. So we've got, what have we got? We've got quite a good range of colours in here as well. I mean, you've got everything that you would need. Let's see if I can get them out of the packet. Come on! These tubes are uh, 10 mil, so they're a little, they're half the size of our Windsor & Newton tubes. We do have a set of 12 here, which is quite nice. Uh, <laughs> this brilliant red underneath, it says poppies waving in the wind. So the, it's not the names, it's like a tagline for them. Caught red-handed, ocean waves rolling in. The cobalt blue hue just says the sea, the sea. <laughs> Okay, whatever floats your boat. So for those of you that are not in the UK, WH Smith are a UK retailer and they're basically a newsagent stroke stationer. Um, they do do a range of art products and I have tried quite a few of their products and I'm a particular fan of their coloured pencils. I use their drawing pencils too so the, the quality isn't bad at all for the price. So I thought I'll try and do a little bit of colour matching and just see what they're going to feel like and how well they dilute you know just do what i do just play about with them basically that's kind of you know i would just like to play with art stuff that's what we do here so i'm going to pick out a yellow i've got a lemon yellow i'm pretty sure i've got something similar yeah i've got a lemon yellow in the windsor and newton as well i just want to see what it squeezes like out the tube these have been sitting for a while um it doesn't feel particularly like viscous or globy is the word that i would use but neither does the windsor and newton one and they look to be quite similar in pigment sitting on the palette there there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference in that so let's see what we're getting ourselves into here i'm going to use the uh, the windsor and newton brushes that came in the came in the box. So this is the, the WH Smith paint first of all and you can see it's blobbed up quite a lot on my brush. So this is it neat and I'm just going to pull it out. It feels like a good consistency but again I'm not really a person to be commenting on stuff like that because obviously this is literally my experience with acrylic. This is not coming from a from an experienced point of view but just having the comparison side by side and when I've picked that up off the palette the Windsor & Newton one does feel a little bit softer and it's not spreading the same. This seemed to feel a lot easier to spread and I don't know whether it's maybe because it is less concentrated but for the yellow I can't really see a huge amount of difference in 
the colour at this stage. So the next thing I want to do is try and water it down slightly and we can see what happens there. So I've got my trusty pipette and see how this mixes in the palette. Ooh. So this is the WH Smith one and it doesn't seem that keen on being mixed. Oh, it's and it's gone kind of um it's lumpy. <laughs> That's pretty pretty revolting actually. <laughs> It's going down okay, and again, it doesn't look that different. <laughs> doesn't look that different to what we did with the first one. Oh my goodness! There you go. Look, it looks almost the same. Again, it's a bit harder to tell with colours like yellow though, because they are just naturally lighter colours. So let's see what the Winsor and Newton one does. It's definitely mixing with water a lot better. It's it's less reluctant to mix with the water, and I've almost got that smooth. It, it does look slightly lighter and slightly more transparent than the neat paint. And it's definitely gone down on the paper better. I don't have, because it's mixed better, I don't have the same, um, you know, like brush strokes that I can see here. So for mixability, we're definitely, there's definitely an improvement with the, the Windsor and Newton. So let's try another colour. Let's try a dark colour now and see how we get on with that. Pithalo green. And we've got a Pithalo green in the WH Smith set as well. So we can try these two together. Oh, looks very dark on the camera, but it is it's an attractive shade of green. Wow, well, that's a really close colour match as well. I'm impressed. The Windsor and Newton one does look more green where as the WH Smith one looks as if it's a bit darker and it's got a little bit more blue in it. Again, you'll be able to see that better once I actually put it on the canvas. And that is quite globy. I'm having trouble picking that up. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm having to sort of like turn the brush and smooth out all the, the, glo the globy bits. But there you go. That's, that's quite a vibrant colour. It's quite nice. And we'll try the Windsor and Newton one now. And I would say the Windsor and Newton one does look a lot richer, a bit more pigmented and a bit less watery for want of a better word, but you can see how dark it looks next to that on the camera. So again, I'll put a couple of drops of water in and see how how much we want to want to mix. You can see how the, the pigment's all like sort of broken up and it's, it is mixing with the water, but it is very reluctant. I'm kind of having to like sort of bash it down almost and it's not feeling consistent at all. It's lumpy and I don't want, this is, I mean, you can end up knackering brushes doing this, you know, if you're spending too much time sort of scrubbing about. Right, I'll try and take some of this up now. So it is diluted a little bit, but it doesn't look that different to, to the original. I was hoping there would be a bit more of a difference, but there's not really. Okay, let's try the Windsor and Newton one. And it's already, because it's been sitting, it's already kind of like started to dissolve. So definitely the, the more expensive paints have much more mixability with water there. They seem to be a lot happier to get in there and mingle with the old H2O. And that's going to result in much smoother brush strokes and that means straight away. But you can see there as well that that looks as if it's been diluted and that's what I would expect. You know, if you put water in something, you expect it to look diluted. And it does look paler than the original. Whereas I just feel with the the WH Smith ones there's not really that much of a difference in that. I find that slightly slightly puzzling. Slightly puzzling. Okay, so now we've got the, the, the sort of layerability test as well, because I'm assuming that these will be just about dry here. Yeah, they do dry pretty quickly. So let's see if we take some of the WH Smith paint. I'll try not to get a big blob off it. And we'll just do the the opacity test. And I'll do the same with the the Windsor and Newton one. Now bear in mind that this is the diluted paint and we shall give that, oh, give that, oh, give it a waft, or try off. So I can see there that you can see a little bit of the yellow coming through that green and even if I lift off some of this, you know, I'm really having to pull off quite a lot of what I put down with the Windsor and Newton one for it to, to show through and it's still not showing through as much as the the WH Smith ones. So I think it would be safe to say that the the formulation of the budget one of the WH Smith paint, it is thinner and it might have, I don't know for sure, but it might have more binder in it. The fact that it's not, it's reluctant to mix with the water. It, it is doing it, but it's, it's kind of like grudged 
so definitely more mixability with the acrylic. The other test I want to do is how white the white is and how black the black is because that's always a good test of how pigmented paints are. So I've got these, um, now interestingly they are both the same colour names as well, it's titanium white if you remember I've got these great big massive tubes and the, the WH Smith have the same names as well so that's uh, that keeps things nice and tidy. And I'm just going to splodge a wee bit of this straight onto the canvas. Maybe not so, so much with this massive tube of acrylic. Oh, get off. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, so let's pull out the WH Smith one first of all. And that that looks pretty solid. I'm quite impressed with that. Again, it's re it is really globby. Globby. There must be the, the, a proper scientific word for that. Viscous is the word I would use, but that means thick. That doesn't mean globby. And this is our... Windsor and Newton and I would say that looks fairly good. A nice proper like true black which especially with acrylic paint that's exactly what you're looking for. So we'll try with the titanium white as well. Now I have cleaned this brush but in the interest of not cross contaminating I'm going to use the other one which is the I think this one's a number six. This one doesn't want to come out. Oh there we go. Okay, so WH Smith one. I would say that that looks like white paint to me. You can just see that on the paper there. And now the Windsor and Newton one. That's really difficult to do on white paper. Th this is, this looks whiter. That sounds ridiculous, but it does look whiter. And you can see that because it's white onto white, that that is much thicker paint as well. But still, I think, see for a budget paint, I don't think there's too much of a difference to make me not want to use these as a as a complete beginner. Um, I wouldn't be opening the tube, you know, it's not as if I've opened these up and it's been like, oh my goodness, like the difference is night and day. It's really not. And I suppose, you, the things that you expect from cheaper art products are right here. It's a bit thinner, it doesn't mix as well with water, you know, that kind of thing, but it's nothing, it's nothing drastic really. So uh, yeah, I would say I'm, I'm actually okay with, with this. Um, I'd, I think I would be quite happy to use them. I'm going to take this white up, see what that does over there. Try and give it like an even layer so that it's not all, you know, it's not piled up thickly. But that's covering that yellow quite well. And let's see what it does on the green as well. Because this green is much, much darker. Just dab a bit of that on. And that has, it has covered up a fair bit of green there. I'm quite impressed. And if we do the same with the, the WH Smith one now. Again, that's doing a reasonably good job. That is not to be sniffed at. Now this is interesting because the green is starting to show through here with the Windsor and Newton one. But not so much with the... WH Smith one. I do think it's partially due to drying time, um, but that is pretty good that it's covering it up like that. So all in all, I would say that for the grand sum of £3.99, if you are in the UK, I, I would give these a bash. If you See, if you're new to acrylics and you want to try them out and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I would say this is a great place to start. I think the only thing about this set in particular is that the tubes are pretty small, so you wouldn't be doing anything, you know, you wouldn't be doing a great big massive... A picture with them because you're going to run out of paint pretty quickly but again you can get especially the more common colors it is handy to have a massive tube of things like white and black and even just your primary colors because you can mix them obviously and uh, that is the last thing that we are going to do now let's grab some red so I've got the choice of brilliant red or crimson in the WH Smith set and uh, the well it's cadmium red hue because the permanent rose was quite a pinky color so I think we'll go with the Brilliant Red and the Cadmium Red Hue and just, uh, I don't think these will be compatible, but we can try. Oh, that's that's pretty, that's pretty red. <laughs> Can't say much about that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this up and I'm going to try and mix it in with this blobby yellow up here and see what that gets us. And we're mixing, we're mixing, we are mixing. Okay, so that's taken a bit of wh a while to work that in. I would say that resembles a, quite a nice rich shade of orange. Ooh, that looks really good. So I think, I think it's fair to say that on the canvas, the WH Smith paints behave quite well. Uh, you know they they aren't uh, they aren't wayward and difficult to work with on the canvas. I think that the difference really shows 
in the mixing abilities and just the, the actual properties of the the consistency and the makeup of the paint. So yeah, I, I would say you see the difference in the palette more than on the paper. That That's my final uh, sort of bottom line, I think. And that's, and that's much, much easier to mix. Like I've had no problems mixing that and it's going down really smoothly. You know, I can get some really smooth brush strokes with that that I, I'm just not getting here. That's pretty thick. And again, that, that kind of reminds me of um, if any of you had kids' poster paint when you were young. It used to come in little pots. That's kind of what the WH Smith acrylic is re reminding me of when it, I'm putting it down on the paper when it's quite thick. So, I mean, you could water it down, but the work is in actually working it down and getting those lumps out, you know, like beating the lumps out like you would in cake mix. But overall, I think that's great for the for the price. I would have picked a more sort of generic and internationally available budget brand if I could, but I've been very limited in what I've been able to buy just because of the COVID lockdown situation. And I know that this really only applies to people in the UK. Uh, but maybe at a later stage we can revisit this and I could get, you know, I could get a group of budget brand acrylics. If that's something that you would like to see, just drop me a comment and let me know because I'd be happy to do that later on once things are back to normal a little bit more um, because that might be quite an interesting comparison as well. So that is the first part of our little experimental day. They, honestly, these are like, apart from pencil drawing, these are my favourite videos to do because I just like messing about with stuff. I managed to get a hold of some of the acrylic mediums that we talked about a tiny little bit in the other videos and I have here iridescent medium so this basically makes any acrylic paint you have sparkly like what's not to like about that so we are going to give that a try uh, these tubs are 250 mil and you do actually get Winsor & Newton acrylics in this size as well like the actual paint so 250 mil tubs and depending on which one it is these retail around about eight pounds I paid slightly more for this again I paid 11 pounds for this but it's just because of the the current circumstances but this was the only one that I could get so I went on to eBay and I found a lady who was selling the sand texture gel and also the modeling paste on eBay second hand I paid the princely sum of eight pounds for both of these so that was a little bit of a bargain and I'm still able to make my videos so the good thing about these is you can unscrew the top and you can lift it straight out the tub like I just did there but if you lift this lid it's also got a proper squeezy hole <laughs> you know, like a ketchup bottle. So it keeps it nice and clean and tidy as well. <laughs> the other thing that I purchased as well is just a set of these little plastic palette knives. Um, they're quite flexible, they're quite soft. It's not like using metal ones, but I thought that might be quite interesting because I seem to have a great time with the background when I did the acrylic painting. And I just like to sort of smoosh things about and So I thought it might be fun to try with some of these palette knives and uh, you can see they're they're pretty flexible so they're not you know you're not going to be hammering away with those but it might give us some interesting lines and what i did do was when i was filming the painting that i did i actually did a second one and did a very similar background and it looks at oh it looks a little something like this so what i want to do is uh, just try and make this into something i literally just sort of shut my eyes and went and I thought we could maybe try and turn it into something a bit more interesting using our palette knives, but also using some of these mediums as well. But we'll test them out first. So the iridescent medium, I'm just going to read you the first bit on the back, uh, says it can be mixed with acrylic colour or applied over the top of dry colour to give a unique effect of light interference. Creates stunning pearlescent effects. So I don't know whether just to take a little bit out of my brush would probably be the best idea here. Oh, come on. It's quite pearly, I have to say. When you see that in the lid, ooh. I like this idea of being able to turn absolutely anything into, you know, something shiny. <laughs> and I know I'm not alone in that. I know you guys like shiny things. Don't pretend that you don't because you do. So I'm just going to see what happens. I'll start with a little bit. I'll just take a little bit on the end of my paintbrush and I am going to mix it in with this green and maybe I should have thinned it down with water first I'm gonna to have to zoom in to show you this I don't know how it, oh Ooh. I'm making the oh it's pretty noise I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this in the light I really want you to be able to see it because it's so cool okay do you know what I'm gonna be really brave I'm gonna dump some more in <laughs> 
because we want to be able to test it till it's full effect. Okay, there's glitter everywhere now in my water. It looks like a unicorn's peed in my paint water. <laughs> oh, it is lightening the paint. I'm thinking maybe we should have thinned it out with a little bit of water first before we just started wanging it, <laughs> wanging it in here. <laughs> now you can see the difference in it now. Like if I tilt it up to the light there, that is like, ooh. Ah! That is interesting. It doesn't actually look that pearlescent. <laughs> right, okay, we'll leave that to dry. We'll leave it to dry. We'll see what happens. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to thin some of this. Now, I just need to remember which one it is. This is the Windsor & Newton one. <laughs> oh, lordy. Yes, I think it would be better to add your neat paint and your iridescent medium in first and then put drops of water in and mix them together. Uh, I'm sure for those of you that do use acrylics on a regular basis that you will tell me in the comments that I've been doing it wrong but please please do tell me that and tell me the right way to do it because that would be good to know but yeah we'll leave this to dry I'm, I'm not convinced about this at all so it just it does literally just look like wet paint and the next one I'm going to try is the sand texture which I'm really curious about oh it's in Spanish that's that doesn't help me hang on oh here we go granular paste that's got fine particles of natural sand in it use alone for colorless results or mix with acrylic color can be over painted well that's good to know as well i think i might just pop this i should have done that with the other one as well actually you think by now that i would have a proper formula for doing stuff like this i'm just making sure i've got a clean brush for this i'm just going to stick the iridescent medium down bare if that makes sense okay it's actually quite pretty it's pretty. I'm going to have to make sure that I clean these brushes really thoroughly as well because these little um, sparkly particles, they stick to everything. So this is the sand texture one. Oh, oh, that feels awful. <laughs> that feels horrible on the brush. I'm just going to try and get this as flat as possible. And I suppose I better leave that to dry now as well. So the last one I've got here is the modelling paste. The idea behind this is it's supposed to make your paint, well it says give it body, it's making it thicker so that you can have like a textured appearance kind of like you would with oil paint. Uh, a fine texture paste with soft yet thick sculptural consistency. Build up depth in layers allowing each to dry, can be mixed with colour. So as far as I'm concerned I would only mix this with paint i don't think i would use it on its own this smells horrendous this stuff so i wonder what i wonder what happens that's like my favorite phrase isn't it i wonder what happens so let's um try and squish oh wow this is this is just making this into the the wh smith paint <laughs> Holy moly, now bear in mind that that paint's watered down and it is sticking to the brush like glue. I wonder if I can get... <laughs> oh lordy, right, um, oh, get off my brush. It is altering the colour of the paint slightly, but if you look at, look at that brush, wow. Yeah, you're getting like proper texture in there. That's, that's, look at that, ooh. It's still going, you can, if you press down, it's still going on smoothly. But you can actually like, oh, blah, 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 blah. oh that is so cool. Okay, that's cool. I like that a lot. Right, I'm going to mix the sand texture in with some of this mixed orange paint just to see what it's like because it's, it is proper texture though. Like you can really, really see that on the paper. See if I just kind of like wiggle that up and down. And you can see my pearlescent, it looks it's as if it's got a kind of sheen on it. Uh, it's definitely not super sparkly, but I suppose pearlescent and sparkly are two different things. So kind of, kind of expected that, you know. So let's just pop a little bit of this in with the orange and see if we can get quite an interesting texture. Oh, this feels horrible. See, because it's grainy. Oh, I sounded really Scottish there, didn't I? It's pure grainy. Again, it's thickening up the consistency, obviously because it's got sand in it. Uh, and uh, oh yes, okay. Oh, that that it feels absolutely awful, but not in a poor quality way. Just in a, you know, like when you pick paint up off a palette, you expect it to be smooth under the brush, and it's <laughs> it's like the opposite of that. It's the antithesis of that. Let's see if I can. I don't know why I would want to smooth it out, but you know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. It does feel you like you definitely know that there's sand in there. Like there's no getting away from that, and I think you can actually see it there. It is really, really grainy there. 
I'm loving this as well. Look how those peaks are staying put. You can, they would be great for doing maps. Like you could do a massive acrylic map and you could actually have the mountains on it. Oh, I get so many ideas. This is why people ask me quite a lot if I ever run out of ideas for videos and the answer is no. And it's because of playing about with stuff like this. I, have, I would never be able to execute in my lifetime all the ideas that have passed through my chaotic brain, even in the last like year. But this is great. This is fun. Look how much fun I'm having. Okay, the pearlescent one's looking pretty shiny now. It looks pretty good. And you can see it's little bare pearlescent pal next door to it. Once they are dry, we are going to come back and we're going to try and implement these into this abomination of a background that I did it and see if we can try and make it into a picture just for fun. We have our palette knives here as well. And, uh, well, that, that one's going to be interesting. I can't even get it in one of those ducats. Uh, the, these are all like yeah, a bit of a much of a muchness if I'm honest, but I just wanted to have a little go. I can't actually get my, <laughs> I can't get it in there because it's not big enough space. <laughs> have we got a dinkier one? No, okay. Yeah, scoop this one up, there we go. So I just wanted to um, have a go at like, yeah, because I think you could get some quite interesting, you know, sort of expressive lines with a palette knife. And again, a palette knife is not something I um, I have ever used. I'm used to using. I kind of used it a little bit um, when I did the pan pastels video because they have very similar shaped tools, but they have sponges on the top of them. So yeah, let's see if I can scoop up some of this pearlescent stuff because you can like squish it in and then, oh, that's interesting while it's still wet and it can give you some quite interesting and I would imagine quite abstract work. See, you can get it quite flat as well. Pew, 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 pew. Well, that's kind of good fun. <laughs> kind of like that. Waste not, want not. So that's it, yeah, okay. So we, we, we can use the palette knives. Oh, there we go, there's the tiny side of, of, the, of this big, big beefy chap here. He's like the daddy of the palette knives. So if you could get several colours on the end of your palette knife all at once and then yeah, give you like a marble effect. Yeah, look. Okay, that's fun too. Yeah, I'm liking this game. This is good. Let's see if we can really make this interesting. Ooh. Okay, now we're, now we're jamming. Interesting that the biggest palette knife ends up being the only one I can get in my little tiny <laughs> palette. <laughs> Bellows. Okay, you can vary your pressure as well. Obviously, when I started that stroke, I didn't have a lot of pressure on it. And it's given me this sort of nice, sort of globby bit of texture. I'm really, I love texture. I love drawing texture into drawings, but I love having actual tangible texture without having to draw it in and make it look like it's got texture. And I think that's why I may be enjoying myself a little bit too much right now. I'm like trying to scrape up every last morsel of paint just so I can do that again. I wonder what happens if we... Oh, okay, that didn't go so well. Oh. Again, we're back to unicorns, but it looks like I've unicorns vomited on my paper. Yeah, you could get some really nice effects, actually. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm impressed with the whole palette knife thing. I like that a lot, and uh, I would I would like to do this some more. Yes, please. Yes, please. So obviously, you're going to get different effects with different shaped palette knives, but I, I think this one might be my favourite already. I like the Mac Daddy, and I think we're going to have to use this in our painting. So I've just brought you over to the window here because I think you can see what's going on a bit better just in the light. So this was the textured one and you can see it, it does, it looks like little mountains are going on there. Um, that's worked really well and you can see the pearlescent one, if I tilt that in the light, how shiny they look. And I mean that's them, they're completely dry because they do look a bit like, you know, as if it was paint but it's not and you can see the sand texture there now this is the one with the sand texture in it here and that is actually you know you can see it up close but I think it's going to be difficult to mix that in with the paint properly so that you don't get these these brush strokes but we can certainly give it a try so anyway I thought you'd just like to see that in uh, you know a bit stronger light so that you can see what's going on